Hey you guys, welcome back to Paul's Flight Deck for the next video tutorial in our simple VHF radio build. Now tonight we're going to do something a little different. We're going to be desoldering the display blocks off of the Mac 7219 boards. Here I've drawn up a little slide, a couple of them actually, showing you the process. What we're going to do is take these four digit display blocks, we're going to desolder them and remove them. and if you have three digit display blocks you'd like to replace the four digit displays with, you can actually put those in play now. This will give you a lot more room behind the faceplate to work and because I'm using the four digit displays, mainly because I want to save money and just stick with what I've got just to make this as simple as I can, as cost effective as I can. And then finally what we're going to do is we're going to take our displays, we're going to put them on a perf board or um, also referred to as a proto board and we're just basically going to match up the pins where they would be if these displays stayed on the Mac 7219. Anyways, let's go ahead and jump over to my workbench and get started. So some of you that have been following me may notice that I have a different background now and this is actually a cutting board for arts and crafts and I went with this because it's a lot wider. And I found out through some research from other YouTube content experts that with the C920 Logitech camera I use, it has a problem with focus and clarity if it has a dark background. So that's why I went with this guy here. So this is a lot lighter. And as you can, you can probably already tell in this video, the, even the words and the focus from being zoomed in looks really good. So jumping straight into what we're doing here. This is a PCB board mount. I got this off Amazon. I think it was like $10 US. I'll put a link in the description. But um, this makes it really easy to be hands-free and still be able to put a good amount of pressure on your board when you're working on it. So you're going to need, of course, your soldering iron. I've got my cleaner here. You can see me put my solder iron in it. And I've got a little bit of solder here because sometimes when you're working with desoldering it's best if you actually add a little bit of your own sometimes and it helps some of that stubborn solder come off another thing you're going to use actually I've, i hope i got enough clarity yeah, i've got enough clearance my finger may be way in the way but i've got this pump and the way this pump let me rotate this so you can see the way this works is you're going to use your soldering iron to heat this up and i've got my soldering iron set to 350 degrees celsius so that is typically a pretty good soldering point. I may go up to 380, 390 sometimes, depending on the how strong the solder that the manufacturer used. But typically 350 is not bad. So what we're going to do is go ahead with this guy. We're going to push down and load it. What happens is once you get your solder off, you push this button and it pulls the solder out. Sometimes it does a good job, sometimes it doesn't, but we'll Go ahead and get started here and see how it does. So,
So it has not been very fun so far, but I did manage to get everything desoldered. So I'm going to go ahead. I've got this little kit here I got off Amazon. I'll link it. But it's basically for replacing screens and phones and tablets and stuff. But they're great. Like this one little, it's a two-sided pry. It's got a flat end and one with a little leverage. But they're great. So we can go ahead and just carefully do what I'm doing. I'm basically just wedging that on the sides a little bit. I'm going to do both sides. There we go. That one came out real easy. And come on, guys. There we go. So now I'm going to hope and pray that during the desoldering, I did not damage the board because it's looking a little rough, to be honest with you. And uh, luckily, I've got like 12 of these, so if I mess up one, at least I'll hopefully learn something and do better on the others. But there you go. There's one desoldered. And I'll work on the other one now. All right, and now I have the second one done. So it looks like when I look at this and try to wiggle it out. Oh, there we go. We got it. All right. And I don't know if you can tell, but that side looks a lot better than the first side I did. Kind of hard to tell on camera, but there we go. All right, so these are just standard header pins, and you just break them off for you. So we need six. We need one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to break it right there. Cool. All right, so now we have all of our header pins in. I'm gonna flip this over and kind of at an angle because I don't want them to fall out. And I'm gonna start soldering these guys in. That's about as good as we're going to do with focus, but yeah, we're doing good there. They're looking pretty good. All right, so we have desoldered the two blocks from the Mac 7219 board. We then put our header pins. It's not necessary. You don't have to do this. I just did it to make it easier for myself. You can actually just push 22 gauge wire right through and solder it all on there if that's what you want to do. So what we're going to do now is take our male to female header pins. I think this is about 60 or so. I can't remember. I ordered them. Uh, they just got here this weekend. And we're going to connect it all up and make sure that it works the next point. So first, we are going to take our two displays, decimal side down. And on my breadboard, which I think is a 64, we are going to straddle the middle line and I'm going to make the first pin go into 15 so I've got 15 and there's six pins going through I'm going to take my second one and I'm just going to lock it up right in beside it and it looks like it's going to start at 27 and run all the way through 32 for this all right cool so that's done so now this is the fun part we're going to want to connect all the correct pins and the decimals are down. You can see the decimals on here. Um, it's not focused very well, but you can see that there are decimals. So that matches and we can read the words so we know that we're the right way. So basically, I'm just going to go ahead and take this and start pulling wires off one by one and connecting each of these to the right pin. So the top's gonna go to the top. I 
I'm just gonna go all the way down the road here. Alright, so we have all the top done, now I have to do the bottom. So I've got everything wired up and it's a little crazy, but don't worry. There's going to be a very easy to understand diagram following this segment on a slide. So you'll be able to check your wiring. Now what we want to do is actually wire this guy up the right way. Okay. So to wire this to the Arduino, what we're going to do is start with a female to male red. At least that's what I'm going to do. And we're going to go into the red power bus on the breadboard. And then we're going to do the same thing with a green for the ground. That way you guys can see that. Okay, so that's our power and our ground. Next, we've got our DIN, D-I-N. I'm going to use a blue for that. And we're going to want to go into the bottom of the Arduino. D is pin 28. I think it's on this side right there. So pin 28 then we're going to connect that into our board. CS also known as L in SimVim. We're going to do purple. That is going to be pin 27 which is right on this side of the Arduino. Cool. Got that done. And last is our clock, and our clock, if you remember from the last tutorial, is the actual pin that receives the signals for the frequencies to display the correct segments onto our board. And we're going to pick 30 for this exercise, and 30 is up here at the top. So I think that's 30. Yep, we're good. So just a little recap here. I know it's probably hard to see, but we've got... Our top fin is our power. It is going to the power bus on the breadboard. Ground, same thing, but it's going to the ground bus on the breadboard. Then pin D is going to pin 28 on the Arduino. CS, also in SimVim known as L, is going to 27 on the Arduino. And then the clock pin is the actual active pin that's gonna drive these segments. We chose 30. And you have to use 30 through 38 if you're gonna do a direct connection on the Arduino Mega. Okay, and one last thing we're gonna do here is there is a ground on the bottom left. We're actually gonna go ahead and connect that and we're gonna ground it on the ground bus just to make a full circuit. There we go. So last thing to do is to hook up our power and our ground over here and that should do it. Now, we also, I'm gonna hook up my power and my USB. There we go for my Arduino. Now we're going to jump on into SimVim and configure this to work. After that, we're going to load X-Plane and test it in the Zebo to make sure that these are working. So at SimVim.com, we want to click on Configurator and we want Full Table, Master, Extended, and Serial. And we have two engines, and actually, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in some so you can see this a little better. All right, so we are doing Com Nav, and we are doing Displays. And we're going to do a six digit. Okay, we're going to click on here, and it's a seven segment display. And we have to select 30 through like 37 or 30, I believe, because these are for these type of drivers. So we got a max 7219. Position, we're not gonna worry about this right now. I'm just gonna pick brightness control bus one and hit done. 
All right, so we are going to save this. We're going to keep it. It's not harmful. Show in folder. And I believe it should have put another screen over here. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to cut. Then go to my X Plane 11 folder. Resources. Plugins. SimVim. And I'm going to paste the data.cfg. Uh, you're going to replace it. Then we're done. Now we're going to go back over and launch X Plane and see if we can't get our displays to work. All right, loading into X Plane. Okay, so we're going to go to New Flight. We've already got the Zebo 737-800X selected. Customize. We're going to start with engines running. None of this matters over here. Just hit Start Flight. And we're going to jump ahead a little bit so we don't have to wait on the loading screen. Okay, so we are in the Zebo. We're going to close this stuff out and wait for this to complete so we know we're connected. And... I'm going to go ahead and pop up our camera, and as you can tell, we already have our segment going. I'm going to dim that brightness just a little bit, take down that gain, and we're going to take down the white balance so it's not so crazy overpowered on the display. But as you can tell, we're working. That's awesome. So we're good here. Let's stop spinning. I'm going to go ahead and look down at our camera to our displays well we'll go over right here and we will we'll zoom in ah i'm gonna do that go down some so we are we want to make sure that our active is working so i'm going to change that and then change our standby boom field weather wind one four zero at one zero visibility more than huh. 10 apparently conditions apparently I picked a random ATIS and didn't know it that's really funny I just picked a random thing so let's just try this one sweet so we are working there we go end of tutorial pretty easy guys thanks again for your support and for tuning in please hit the like and subscribe button and check out my website www.paulsflightdeck.com and don't forget to go check out SimVim their Patreon site, and their normal site at simpin.com. And until the next video, you guys take it easy.